Julia, what are we doing wandering around this spooky, abandoned nuclear bunker? You're so suspicious. Can't we just go for like a lovely evening stroll through an abandoned building and you'd not be all jumpy? No, 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 we can't actually because <laughs> I've said to you loads of times before, I really, really don't like spooky games, especially when things pop up around the corner at you. He's not going to enjoy this episode at all, is he? Uh, what was that? Coming up on the show. It gets pretty stressful. It'll be fun, she says. Put the PSVR helmet on and see if you can get past the first guest house without messing with her. Resident Evil is one of the longest running franchises in gaming. It was 1996 that we first met Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine, two characters that fans will tell you have been through a lot in the last 20 years or so. Find anything, Jill? Nothing. The first game in the Japanese horror series had players trying to escape from zombies and monsters, a theme that's carried on ever since. It set the tone for a franchise that has spawned six other major game releases, books and movies too. Resident Evil 2 first hit PlayStations in 1998 and immediately upped the stakes. Players struggled to escape the effects of a zombie virus in an infected city. The game became a firm fan favourite, despite the questionable voice acting and frustrating controls, Ace Officer Leon Kennedy. I'm coming back for you. Just hold on. The games went on a bit of an action-adventure tangent for a few years as they explored the story of the Umbrella Corporation, whose scientists created the virus that caused all this fuss in the first place. Two years ago, Resident Evil 7 stripped everything back. Once again, a single person trapped in a house with limited weapons, going back to the series' roots. Now, rather than a fresh new instalment, Capcom has remade Resident Evil 2, so players can experience Raccoon City in glossy, high definition. There's something not quite right with this place. Oh, come on, Steph. This is fun, surviving against all odds. What do you mean, surviving against all odds? Well, you know, it's a bit like Resident Evil, the game that invented the survival horror genre. You know, you've got to survive with limited resources and, you know, keep your wits about you at all times. I'm literally my wits end. Well, you know, there's a whole world and wealth of zombie movies and TV shows and the like, but, you know, there's something... <laughs> <laughs> Very slippery floor. <laughs> What's special about the early Resident Evil games is they strip you of the power to defend yourselves. You know, in video games, we're often imbued with supernatural strength or guns with unlimited ammo, and Resident Evil completely kicked that out the window and said, no, like, to get real terror, you need to feel like the next battle that you have with an enemy could be your last. But Capcom have done a lot of things to make this game appeal to a, a broader audience. Like, they've got uh, wet gore tech to make like all of the zombies look just that little bit extra gross. Um, they've got like huge environments, like the station is just a fascinating place to explore. But I think the thing that may appeal to people most is that blend of real sort of gross out horror and the puzzle solving. I think that there's no other series really at the moment that does that quite the way Resident Evil does. Post Resident Evil 4, which is arguably one of the greatest video games ever made, definitely for my money the best Resident Evil game, that blended horror but also blended action, you know, it had great action set pieces. And I think Capcom maybe mistook that for why it was popular, why it was good and so plain. And in the years of the 360, when you know, we got the rise of the first person shooter. They definitely went down the action route.
When they vacated that space, a lot of independent developers came along. Smaller games like Outlast and Amnesia and even things like Slender, really cheap games, the really independent debt games, came in and kind of stuck away that horror audience. Right, Jules, I'm fed up with being in the dark. Okay. That looks like a light room. Let's go in there. All right. Well, I mean, come on, Steph, you should have known something was up. You've been caught out by zombies before in this series. No, no. We've been caught up with a series before. No, no, I mean, I think it's mainly you. Oh, uh, what is that? I mean, I never really liked science at school anyway, but this is a... Uh... You, you, you do it. Give me a weapon. Right, just... should be used to this by now. It's not the first time the Resident Evil's caught us out. Uh, where's she come from? Behind, behind your flipping heck. Oh. OK, that was horrific, I'm not going to lie. I think, I think we're safe here. Yeah. You know what though? Mm -hmm. I've been thinking. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've played all the Resident Evil games, right? I mean, well, from behind your fingers. That is, that's very true. But even from behind my fingers, I can tell that you can really see the influence of cinema on the games, right? You know, like George A. Romero's zombie movies, that sort of thing. Oh yeah, you know, and Evil Dead, that's a huge influence on it. Um, what about that bit in um, Resident Evil 7, you know, where you're being force-fed by the Baker family? I mean, that is right out of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I just don't get it, though. Why? The gamers want to be scared. You know what makes you less scared? Having something to fight back with. Like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, but I feel better already. Oh, we're talking. Oh, yeah. Alright, if you lot want to play the scariest Resident Evil game, then easily the scariest one is Resident Evil 7 in VR. That's right. Put the PSVR helmet on and see if you can get past the first guest house without messing yourself. It's a madness, you know. Hey, when the wife is coming at you with a knife in your face like that, I had to, I had to fling the helmet off my head, you know. I was playing it on stream and I was screaming the house down. My name was almost called emergency services on me. It was a madness. Heart rate was through the roof. My watch was saying that I was partaking in vigorous activities. <laughs> I wish. It gets pretty stressful. Like I um I'm always terrified. A tyrant will just like terrify me every time, like whether it's Nemesis or Mr. X or whoever, like there's something about like an unkillable bad guy that just follows you and isn't even in that much of a rush about it, but will just like come after you no matter what you do or where you are. Um that can get pretty stressful, yeah. My favourite Resident Evil game is Biohazard. I love it because it's a completely different feeling to all the other games. You're isolated in a house on your own, it's first person, you've got a crazy family around you trying to kill you and it's, it's amazing. I really love how they've developed that game. Horror games really lend themselves to this idea of fear being a communal emotion because you can play them essentially couch co-op, even if they're a single player game. A horror game is always scarier if you sit and you play it on your sofa with someone else next to you because fear is contagious, you know, it's going to rub off on you. If you're the one with the control and you've got a friend who's getting even more scared, that's part of the joy. You know, a lot of people who talk about their early memories of playing Resident Evil say they did it with their friends. They both egged each other on. Come and film the gaming show, she said. It'll be fun, she said. Well, to be more fair, this, this bit is kind of fun. Well, the sooner I ask this question, the sooner we can get out of here. All right, go what, on then. What do you think has made Resident Evil stand the test of time? Well, that's a very good question, Stefan. Because you know what? There's been an awful lot of great survival horror games since then. I think Resident Evil has lasted because it's constantly reinventing itself. It's really smart in that sense, and a lot of people are down on it because of that, but like, 
it is it has stood the test of time because it's always trying new things. It changed location, Resident Evil 2 is set in a police station for instance. It changes genres, it has spin-offs and some of them have not always been successful. Sometimes they pursued kind of more bombastic um, gameplay, touched to its detriment over time. I think they became less scary games. <laughs> But it's also very much a video game video game. And what I mean by that, it doesn't mind having really elaborate puzzles that once you scrutinize the logic behind them, no one could ever make. And it's a lot about going here, collecting this key, coming back here, turning a dog's head. And none of it really makes sense if you scrutinize it. But that's why it's a very good video game as well. But it kind of mills the two. I really like how the Resident Evil franchise hasn't been afraid to try new things. Admittedly, a lot of them have been hit and miss, but uh, I particularly like how they implemented co-op in the mainstay games like 5 and 6 and, and even Revelations 2 and the co-op elements in which that game had. But I think they could take it further in terms of multiplayer uh, for the Resident Evil franchise. Uh, they could have like something like Spy vs Spy or maybe even uh, how they implemented multiplayer in Splinter Cell 2 back in the day. <laughs> That was super fun. Yeah, whatever, maybe for you. Yeah. Capcom though, right? Uh-huh. You know, they're remastering Resident Evil 2. Yeah. Shouldn't they be making a new game, a new story? Isn't it a bit lazy? Sorry, lazy? Coming from a guy who couldn't even be bothered to run away from a zombie. Oh, not again. I think the creators have gone back and tried to realise the game they would have liked to have made 20 years ago, but couldn't because of a variety of like technical constraints. And you see this a lot with video games because while they are, you know, an artistic expression or form of entertainment, wherever you stand on that argument, um, they are also a piece of technology and they are very much limited by the technology in the era in which they're created. Loads of game developers are doing this. We've seen Crash Bandicoot, we've seen the Spyro remake, uh, we've seen Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu. So it really is a thing. The power of nostalgia and the buying power of millennials who are now in their 20s is creating a whole new trend, which Resident Evil is just the latest to tap into. I'm actually I'm actually really okay with them going back and remaking the older titles because as a fan I, I love the old games so much and I know they'll always be there for us to play but it's just so fascinating to see what changes they make to, to bring it up to date for a modern audience's audience because I think that there's so many things about Resident Evil that have not stood the test of time, you know, tank controls and you know ink ribbons and, and things like that so it is really fascinating to see them sort of cut right to the core of what Resident Evil is and why it works and why people love it and choose what to save and what to change. See, the thing is though, they can't just release an old game as is because as much as we say, oh, it's fine, it's an old game, we love it, we're quite snobby when it comes to graphics. Yeah, and I can see it makes sense, right? It's a bit of a no-brainer. Your hardcore fans are happy because they get to replay their favourite game and newer, younger gamers might be introduced to the franchise. Yeah. And that's fine, but as long as they still keep making new things as well, like Resident Evil 7. And that was in VR as well. I mean, you couldn't even handle playing that on just a normal TV. N no, not good. Did you play it in VR? Yes. And um, how long did you last? Five minutes. That's a lie, I bet it was less. <laughs>